call of Imami Limited, hosted by IIFL Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Percy Pantaki from IIFL Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you. Uh, hi, good evening everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us on the Imami Results uh, Con Call. I have with me Mr. Mohan Goenka, whole time Director and Vice Chairman, Mr. Vivek Deer, CEO of International Business, Mr. Gulraj Bhatia. who will take us through uh, the results uh, presentation and then we will open up for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, per thank you, Percy. Very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today. I am pleased to share our some good set of numbers amidst the challenging economic backdrop. Despite the subdued consumption demand, especially in rural markets, Imami resilience and profit-led growth in the second quarter and first half ending 30th September 2023. In Q2, our consolidated revenues soared to 865 crores, demonstrating 6% growth. Our domestic business exhibited fairly impressive resilience with a 4% growth in net sales and a nearly 2% increase in volumes. Notably, urban-centric channels like modern trade and e-commerce witnessed robust performances, underscoring our adaptability to changing market dynamics. On a brand level, Navratna and Dharmi Cool range performed well and recorded growth of 12% in Q2, while healthcare range grew by 4% and pain management by 1%. Boro Plus, male grooming and cash king range declined in single digits on account of lower consumer demand from the price sensitive sections of mass consumers additionally our strategic investments in subsidiaries helios and brillier science outperformed expectations witnessing a stellar 63 percent growth internationally we continued our upward trajectory growing by an impressive 16% in constant currency and 12% in INR terms. Despite challenges in certain markets due to currency fluctuations and import restrictions, our international business remained buoyant, driven by key regions such as Minap and Sark. With lower input costs and judicious price hikes, we achieved a significant expansion of gross margins by 350 basis points, reaching 70.1%. 70 Our EBITDA registered, ro registered robust growth, climbing by 20% to 234 crores, with margin expanding to 27%, a rise of 300 basis points. For the first half of the financial year, our revenues grew by around 7%, accompanied by an expansion of gross margin by 290 basis points. EBITDA experienced a robust 15% growth, with margins expanding to 25.1%, an increase of 180 basis points. Notably, our profits after tax for the first half saw an impressive surge of 23%, at 316 crores. Further, the company made its foray into the juice category with Allo Fruit through strategic investment in Axiom Ayurveda Private Limited by acquiring 26% equity stake. I'm happy to announce that despite absorbing around 230 crores related to buyback of shares, the company maintains a ro robust cash balance. Consequently, our board has declared an interim dividend of 400% amounting to Rs. 4 per share for FY24. I am also pleased to inform you that following, uh, following the disinvestment of promoters' majority stake in AMRI hospitals 
the promoter's pledge levels are now reduced to around 15% of the promoter's holding in line with our commitment. What's even more promising is our outlook for the future. Despite the headwinds, we are optimistic about the coming quarters. Anticipated improvements in agricultural yields, the onset of festive season, rising rural wages, and increased government spending on infrastructure projects are positive indicators that bolsters our confidence in the recovery of rural markets. Our unwavering focus remains on driving our long-term strategic goals and enhancing our capabilities. We are determined to continue investing in our brands, ensuring superior value for our consumers. With these efforts and the resilience that is the hallmark of Imami's journey, we are confident in our ability to deliver consistent, responsible and profitable growth in the medium to long term. With this overview, I invite Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Abneesh Roy from Novama Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks and uh, congrats on the margins. My first question is on the D2C uh, dental care business. So essentially, I see a lot of new products being launched. So my question is, out of the Jandu portfolio, uh, what percentage of the products which are sold on Jandu D2C website are also available on third parties, say Amazon, Flipkart, Big Basket, etc.? And second is, uh, what is the thought process behind launching a very non-FMCG kind of product? So, uh, jug, tumbler, etc. We don't see FMCG company normally do this, uh, but I understand the Ayurvedic uh, thesis behind this, but why does an FMCG company need to do this? So, Gulraj is there. Gulraj, you can take this uh, question. question. Mr. Bhatia? We are unable to hear you. Hello. Yes. Please go ahead. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for the question, sir. Uh, basically, uh, the whole purpose of launching our D2C portfolio, Jandu Care, was to look at leveraging the opportunities which are coming up rapidly in the Ayurvedic healthcare space. We launched a number of new products, basically, which are targeted towards improving the, the healthcare uh, need gaps which consumers have. And we are not only selling them on the D2C platform, but we are also selling them on other e-com marketplaces and also in the modern trade uh, channel. In that context, we don't just want to limit ourselves to only products or medications which are the traditional healthcare uh, segments. We want to cover the whole gamut of uh, products which probably come in the range of Ayurvedic products. In that context, uh, the benefits of using copper vessels for storage of water, for water bottles, or even glasses becomes an important component. And that's why we're looking at uh, getting into this segment, which is a fairly large segment, uh, which traditional Ayurvedic companies are not catering to as of now. And we'll see the fairly good response on the launch of these products. And on the overall company for the India business, uh, if you could tell us uh, e-commerce and modern trade, what is the growth? And uh, do you expect acceleration given festival demand will be in Q3? Would you expect that? Uh, this is for the company, no, Avnish? Yes, uh, yes, company. Yeah. So modern trade and e-commerce. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the growth has been in the range of about 17 to 18% in uh, modern trade. And for e-commerce, uh, it is about 50% growth in this quarter. Do you expect acceleration? So we expect yeah, similar kinds of growth come to the channels, uh, both from modern trade and e-com. 
in fact uh, our ecom is now reached to almost 13% of our total business and modern trade is at uh, 11% so put together we have almost reached to 24% more mt and ecom and one last follow up i remember at the end of fi 23 you had said uh, how e-commerce is already uh, plus modern trade is 20% of business so right. this year you want to do more focus on profitability rather than uh, sales growth i see sales growth being strong could you address on profitability is it meeting your uh, initial uh, uh, yes sir so that is uh, part of our uh, overall uh, margin expansion plan because now both the channels put together is or 25% of our total business and margins are slightly lower compared to our gt business uh, definitely we have improved our margins uh, in both the channels there is further scope of improving margins uh, in ecom and modern trade uh, it will come gradual but uh, yes there are levers of uh, margin expansion in these two channels so thanks uh, that's all for my side thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of prakash kapadia from anivet portfolio managers please go ahead yeah uh, could you talk about you know uh, rural markets you know we were targeting 60000 villages so you know what is happening are you know bridge packs uh, increasing what geographies are you know we concentrating on and in the opening remarks you mentioned about you being uh, positive about rural recovery coming back that is the first question uh secondly you know chemist channel was very important during covid time so you know as uh, jandu healthcare sales are now bouncing back on the low basis and a normalized base so how much is that uh, important for uh, you know jandu healthcare doing well from year on and uh, cash king what what seems to be hurting us because you know growth remains uh, muted there despite you know we trying uh, organic shampoo new variants so what is happening in some of these uh, things so aren't you know small packs working in cash king what is happening those were my three questions yeah so because uh, rural as i said is still muted uh, i would not say that uh, it has bounced back but of course the election uh, season is going to come in now very soon and government we are all hearing good amount of spends coming in from uh, infrastructure rural side so we all are hopeful that uh, you know the market should bounce back at the same time with our project khoj reaching out to almost 60000 villages those projects are almost complete and uh, due to our investments in uh, these channels we have somehow managed to sail through and we have not declined with the kind of uh, you know uh, weakness that has been in the market okay same same lies in uh, chemist also we have expanded our once chemistry reach to 125000 outlets now uh, through the new initiative there also if you see very specific expansion in chemist channels our growth in chemist is almost 20% so these are initiatives unfortunately as i said the markets are slightly weak once the uh, uh, consumer demand at rural end any of these channels bounce back we would significantly benefit let us uh, as i said we are well prepared we are well geared uh, but uh, very difficult to say when the market would bounce back as far as cash king is concerned you know it has a cycle so i'm not very worried about it yes this quarter we have declined but i'm again confident that uh, in the third quarter we will see a growth because uh, it has to do with consumer promotion at times when there is a consumer promotion the sales really goes up and when we withdraw the sales comes down a bit so uh, hopefully we will end up the year with a growth positive note okay yeah yeah Fine. Mm. i'll join back if i have more questions thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen to ask a question please press star and one on your phone now we have a next question from the line of shirish pardeshi from centrum broking please go ahead hi good evening mohan ji <coughs> rajesh ji and the team 
uh, what I understand, uh, you in the beginning said that you are happy with the growth which has happened uh, over. So if you can break, because to our understanding, uh, June, July, so, uh, and August was bad. So is the recovery is back ended? Uh, uh, or it is front-ended because we now season is panning out and we have been able to get some benefit because of the loading of the products, which is more relevant to the winter uh, care. Uh-huh. No, but uh, she's, uh, she's honestly, we haven't loaded uh, so much stock what actually we had done last year. So that is not a big concern. I, uh, I would say, yes, the markets are still weak. Uh, but uh, and uh, most of the growth you know in this quarter has come from uh, the e-com and uh, some of our strategic investments that we had done so we are still waiting for winter to set in honestly Uh, post Diwali we will get a fair picture you know how the winter products are panning out to be Whatever loading had to be done is done in the month of October and September. But uh, we will have to still wait for the secondaries to happen. Yeah, the reason why I'm asking, because uh, if you have not done the loading <coughs> of winter products, say, end of September, but the initial report says that the winter is started setting in in the north. So assume that last year we had a bad winter uh, or the winter was not so severe. So given that benign base, uh, are you confident or is the science... Uh, on ground seeing uh, that the rural and urban markets are faring well uh, in last 30 40 days uh, you can say so series that uh, markets have definitely slightly bounced back uh, it is not the same weakness what was in the month of july august so the festive season has gone down well last year If you would see the puja festivals or the Diwali was all in the month of October. This year, the Diwali is mid-November. So markets typically bounce back post the Diwali uh, festival. You know, I'm talking of the more uh, GT. Okay. Uh, The secondary will happen uh, particularly for our brands post Diwali. Last year, October, we will have to wait for another 10-15 days to see how the secondaries actually pick up. Yes, but you are right that now the winter has uh, set in in uh, some of the markets in the north. Okay. My second question is on uh, the strategic investment what we have made in the man company and Brillet. Uh, will you be able to quantify what is the revenue we have got this year and last year same quarter? So 63% growth is very humongous. Uh, and more qualitatively, what this growth is driven uh, and what are the things? Is their product portfolio is expanding? Is the reach is expanding? Or is the genuine e-commerce trend is moving and picking up these brands? So there are multiple reason series. Of course, uh, the focus has increased tremendously on uh, both the companies. Uh, there is premiumization which is happening. They, we have also launched a lot of new products in uh, Helios and uh, Belair. And at the same time, uh, we have uh, gone beyond e-com. Uh, a lot is now coming to modern trade and also to some of the large uh, GT stores. So that is also helping in expanding uh, the man company portfolio. And uh, as far as the revenues are concerned, uh, uh, we we will not be able to give very specific numbers, but uh, the base is not very low now. So I, I mean, in terms of revenue contribution or what is the absolute number put together both of the brands, not saying individual, and yeah. more from the, uh, now we are consolidating, so from the uh, margin perspective, what is it that, are they break, broken even at the EBITDA level or uh, there is some loss which you are still booking in this year? So TMC is uh, now break even, uh, but Bill Air uh, still, but it's a very uh, minuscule kind of uh, margin ero- uh, erosion, honestly. And uh, as far as the, the percentage contribution is concerned, it uh, both the brands put together should be in the range of about uh, five five percent, around five percent. Total five or five percent each? Total five percent. Okay. Okay. 
uh, my last question is on the margin front <clears throat> though we have seen a impressive recovery and you have said uh, in quarter 4 that there is no problem of getting the margin back uh, from here onwards, what are the margin levers which we have? Because directionally, uh, most of the raw material uh, is uh, is looking downward, uh, except LLP at this time, which is little firm. So, any any reading, any thought through uh, how we should look at the second half margin? Uh, second half margins again, uh, Shiriz, I am saying that's not a concern, uh, honestly, because raw material prices are still benign. And uh, as I said, uh, both these channels, modern trade and e-com, which now contributes to almost 24-25%, there are margins are relatively lower compared to the GT channels. And we see uh, significant improvement uh, in margins in some of these channels. So margin is not a concern. Uh, we are only awaiting a good set of winter and some rural recovery. That's it. Uh, Okay. Okay. Swanji, thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and 1 on your phone now. We'll take a question from the line of Percy Pantaki from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. On the uh, uh, portfolio of uh, the male grooming, the fair and handsome, uh, what really we need to do to make uh, this brand sort of uh, uh, back on the growth path? Uh, because uh, I understand the overall demand scenario is weak, and as that improves, of course, that's one part of the equation. But apart from that, is there anything else to be done? Uh, yes, Percy, I think, uh, you know, as uh, marketeers, we are definitely looking at uh, what... Uh, major changes brand needs to go through because you are right that uh, brand has come to uh, uh, almost as a kind of stagnancy and uh, we definitely have plans uh, uh, as far as marketing is concerned so it needs a complete relaunch and we are working towards it Mr. And sir, uh, on uh, 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 the other uh, uh, part of the portfolio, uh, which is the, uh, sort of uh, the Boropalas portfolio, uh, it was originally in a cream, then you launched lotions, etc. Can you give some idea on what is the contribution of lotions and like, because lotions is more of a mainstream format, uh, which is catching on. So are we seeing that over the years, the... Uh, 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 salience of lotion has like definitely increased and uh, 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 that is sort of becoming more of a mainstream rather than just the antiseptic cream now. Definitely, Percy, I think Boro Plus uh, brand is no more just an antiseptic cream. So we have uh, significant, uh, ha, we have significant uh, uh, contributions coming in from lotion, Boro Plus uh, soap, Boro Plus uh, Soft, Boro Plus uh, Aloe Vera Gel. So these are the four uh, brands under Boro Plus. And uh, the contribution of these brands should be around more than 20-22%, you know, in the total Boro Plus scheme of things. Right, right. Yeah, that's all for me. We can go back to the question. Please. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we'd like to remind participants to press star and one. We have a question from the line of Shirish Pardeshi from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, Mohanji, thanks for the opportunity again. <clears throat> Two questions. Uh, in the international business, uh, <clears throat> those, this quarter we have seen a very strong growth. But what we also uh, learned from you that there is a currency devaluation which has happened. Uh, in certain part. Uh, CIS is one of the important piece to our strategy and uh, that has uh, seen some weakness. I mean, I understand there is a Russia and geopolitical disturbance, uh, but I think if I look back last four or five years, we have taken a lot of actions. So when do we see a double digit growth? And the part two uh, to this question is that, do you think the second half also we will be seeing a very strong double digit growth in the international business? Yeah, so Vivek? Yeah, uh, yeah, Mr. Sirish. 
CIS Russia, this is one bad quarter which happened for us uh, due to some uncontrollable issues. But when you look at the CAGR over the quarters and quarters, it is performing very well for us, that market. And we expect it to bounce back in quarter three and quarter four again to a decent growth rate uh, due to the effort which we had made in the marketplace over the years. So that is not a concern. The concern which happened was more internal in nature and we couldn't handle that particular thing and that is behind us now on uh, that particular issue. Uh, most markets are showing growth and even the NPDs which we have done in Russia and CIS, uh, they have got a very decent acceptance with the trade channels. Although uh, most of our revenues come out of pharmaceutical channel over there, where the purchase pattern is in the units of three units or two units at time by a pharmacy. Uh, even then, our acceptance for NPDs is uh, becoming very uh, decent over there. So we see a very bright future in this market uh, going forward as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, my second question is on Jandu. Um, I think, Gulraji, I was more keen to look at double-digit growth in healthcare given the basis is benign. Uh, the, the growth in quarter two is just 4%. Uh, though we have seen a very strong momentum on the e-commerce, but could you talk something on the GT channel, how it is faring well, or what is it that the product interventions which are doing? And when do we see, I mean, the base is now going to be normalized in second half also. So can we expect a double-digit growth uh, in the second half? Uh, uh, thanks, Mr. Pradeshi, for your question. So actually, uh, on the back of a relatively better quarter one, uh, we did see a decline uh, in terms of the growth numbers in quarter two, specifically in the medical business. So, and if you see overall also, uh, it is not being just limited to Jandu. Uh, if you see the overall market for various reasons in quarter two has, for the entire OTC and medical business, seeing uh, a bit of a challenge most stagnant in quarter two. So in fact, one of our major uh, other players in the market declared the results a day or two back. So they've also had a, a fairly challenging quarter two. And uh, the current couple of months have been much stronger for the OTC business. So we do see quarter three to be much better. Uh, may not be strong double digit growth, but uh, definitely high single digit growth is what we're seeing. And, uh, we do see the market uh, being on an upward uh, trend and the general business will be on an upward trend in the coming quarters. Okay. My last question on the sales front. Uh, I think, Monju, you alluded saying that project coach, uh, the project is now done. There are a lot of benefits. I'm sure you would have got it because of the distribution in the rural. Uh, but therefore, my question to Mr. Gupta uh, is uh, uh, that what is the next strategy which we are trying to look at? Is the distribution our efforts has already done and now we are looking for throughput or there is still further room for growth in terms of sales efforts to get into maybe tier 3, tier 4 towns and maybe some color. Uh, the alternate channels are firing well, but the, the core problem is still lying in the GT. So what are the efforts, initiatives which we are expecting for next two to three quarters? Hi everyone. Uh, thanks for your question. So, I think Project Koj has prepared the foundation and laid the very solid foundation for reach to these markets. As uh, Mohanji mentioned earlier or in the call, as the markets recover back, I think we are sitting and uh, waiting for these uh, demands to perk up so that we can service very quickly. Now, to your query about what other initiatives are happening, as you mentioned earlier on, whether it's the middle Indian markets or whether it's the pharmacy channel opportunities, we have done a lot of good work over the last uh, few years. So it's all there, you know. I mean, the basic foundations are there, and as the demand perks up, uh, our uh, GTM is there to fire it up in terms of the fulfillment story. Okay. But is there any special in initiatives which we are planning to take uh, once the market recovery happens? I mean, this question is more pertaining to rural, because I do understand the weakness is there, the food inflation has now started subsiding. But in terms of structural changes, in terms of distribution, or what we can do the justice to lift the sales? See, a lot has happened over the last two, three years. I think we first need to chew what we have bitten. We first need to put the performance through these channels, make the foundation stronger, 
and continue to do that. The current reach that we have is quite a lot. And if you have to maintain the current cost to serve and maintain the profitability out of these channels, I think the prudent thing is to stay and first get the sales out of it. Then we will take the next step in terms of what next bite has to be taken. Okay. All right. Thank you and yeah. all the best. Thanks. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Nitin from MK. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks a lot for giving me the opportunity. Uh, my first question is with respect to the guidance we have provided 8 to 10 percent uh, top line growth, 15 percent international growth, double digit growth in healthcare, male grooming, and 200 to 250 bits margin expansion. So, like, uh, how uh, post Q2 numbers and how do you uh, see the guidance uh, holding on? So we don't uh, give guidance within, uh, let's say, but uh, surely you have seen that our margins have expanded by 200 basis points. And uh, I'm very confident that we will end up the year by uh, uh, at least 200 basis points expansion in margin. That is what we it looks like. And uh, top line uh, number also you have seen for the first half, we have done almost 7%. And uh, we will hope to end the year also in the similar range. Of course, a lot will depend on the season and uh, winter season and rural recovery. But uh, we are confident that we will be able to do, uh, you know, high single digit growth. So markets are very, very stable, I would say. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm more confident on the margin front. Uh, we can recover very significantly if uh, the winter sets in well and there is good amount of rural recovery. Thank you. And but, from in, the these, perspective, but yeah. in these difficult uh, times, uh, I would say 7% is also a good uh, top line number. Mm. Yeah, certainly. And in terms of uh, like it is the competitive intensity, does any of your categories see any sort of surge in competition? Not so much, uh, Nitin, only in the cool oil. We had uh, seen Dabur launching uh, cool oil. Uh, so that's the only competition, with new competition that we have seen. Ah. So let us see. Huh? Okay, thank you. And uh, well, lastly, in terms of this festive period, so uh, any uh, p uh, part of the portfolio which is more skewed towards festival, like would you like to highlight? Towards festival? Yeah. No, we don't have any specific skew. We are more winter skewed. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. We thank all the participants for joining us at our results, quarter two results con call. Thank you, IFL, for arranging it. Thank you, Percy. Have a good day. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. On behalf of IIFL Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.